Ah, oh, just what I needed. How about you, Pooh? Uh, Pooh, maybe you should slow down a bit there, friend. Pooh, are, are you okay? Are you okay, Pooh? Pooh? Oh, bother. Starting CPR. Internet, welcome to Film Theory, the show that dives headfirst into a honeypot of theories only to pass out in a sugar coma. With 2020 keeping me locked inside with a toddler, I've broken down and broken out a couple of the classics from my childhood to show him. There's Mickey Mouse, there's Mulan, but his favorite is the 1977 classic animated movie, The Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh. Granted, he really only likes to listen to the theme song 30 times in a row and run around in counterclockwise circles to it, but well, he was doing Doing that over and over and over again, I was theorizing this movie was a staple of my childhood, and it's been really fun to go back and watch it. But looking at it now through theory addled eyes, I have a few questions for old Pooh there. There are quite a few Winnie the Pooh theories out there in the world, and I mean, this stuff goes deep. I think one of the weirdest that's gained a lot of traction over the years is that the internet claims the characters from the Hundred Acre Wood represent the seven deadly sins. Rabbit is wrath because he's always angry, Owl is pride because he's so cocky and confident all the time. You get the idea. Pooh is, of course, gluttony, constantly eating honey and hungry for more, but I'm not interested in the seven deadly sins idea. I think that one is a bit of a stretch. Even I have my limits. But I am interested in Pooh's honey obsession. It's a clear driving force for him throughout these movies. We literally never see him eat anything else. So I asked myself if it would be possible for Pooh to survive only on honey alone. At first, it was just a little thought experiment, honestly, but it ended up here as an episode because there's a lot more more than just a smackerel of biology involved. And also, this is like the only Disney theory I've done that's not about the main character being evil or dead or about to die. Or is it? Just kidding, this is Winnie the Pooh we're talking about. You're here because you like things that are cute and relaxing and get you to think, think, think. So today, let's think, think, think together and get this episode started. A few ground rules to this theory since yes, I know, Pooh and his friends are stuffed animals. In reality, it means that none of the plushy characters actually have to eat to survive, but we're assuming here that Pooh is gonna be a real bear because, well, that's how he's depicted in the movies. He's a plushy bear, sure, but he still roams around the forest eating honey by the pot load. Even in the live action movie Christopher Robin, the stuffed teddy bear is still trying to consume very real world honey, so we're just gonna go with that. Plus, we need Pooh to eat honey so we can continue to live on in the very real imaginary world of our hearts. To start with, I think there's a simpler question that we need to answer first. Do real bears actually eat honey. I'm sure most of you are probably rolling your eyes at this point. Of course, bears eat honey, Mad Pat, but honestly, I was a bit skeptical. Bees are serious business, and if you're a bear, you're looking for the path of least resistance between you and your dinner. So my assumption would be that most bears were only getting honey from, like, unsuspecting campers who also somehow think that honey is a camping necessity. I thought that the idea might just be movie nonsense that we've been fed throughout our childhoods, but I actually did some research, and it turns out the idea of bears eating honey is based on real world fact. According to National Geographic, quote, all bears are considered omnivores, and yes, they all love the taste of honey. Other sources state that this is because honey is made up of the simple sugars, glucose, and fructose, which can be broken down quickly by mammals for a quick boost of energy. Plus, the sweet, addicting qualities of sugar keep them coming back for more. It's basically the bear equivalent of us with candy. You say you're only going back for a couple of M&Ms, but before you know it, the whole bag is gone. There's even closed-circuit TV footage of bears in China sneaking into a local nature reserve to eat the honey collected in the apiary. Clearly bears very much want to eat honey, but could they survive on it? Well, we're not really interested in whether all bears could survive, we only care about one bear in particular. Different species of bear have different biological requirements, so to answer this question we really need to figure out what kind of bear is a Pooh bear. Winnie the Pooh was created by A. A. Milne in 1926 and was based on his son's stuffed bear. His son, Christopher Robin Milne, named the toy after a popular American black bear at London Zoo called Winnipeg. So is that our answer then? He's a black bear? Well, just because Pooh was named after a black bear, it doesn't guarantee
guarantee that that's what he is. So to double check, let's compare Pooh to other types of bears. There are eight species of bear in existence today. The North American black bear, the brown bear, the polar bear, the Asiatic black bear, the Andean bear, the panda bear, the sloth bear, and the sun bear. We can discount a few right off the bat. Pooh is very clearly not a panda based on his lack of fur patterns. This logic can also be applied to the Andean bear, with Pooh lacking the famous spectacled face markings, as well as the sloth, sun, and Asiatic black bears with Pooh lacking the prominent chest markings. He's also not a polar bear given the fact that he lives in a forest rather than the Arctic. After that, we're left with only two types of bear, the brown bear and the American black bear. But MatPat, I hear you say, Pooh is clearly yellow, not black or brown, to which I say, not so fast. First, the original Winnie the Pooh is not yellow, he was, in fact, brown. In bringing him to film, Disney blondified him as they did with Christopher Robin, who was also a brunette in real life. Also, sure, Pooh is yellow in the movie, but actually both brown and black bears have been seen in a variety of colors, including black, brown, and even golden blonde. There are also a couple of other historic and geographic reasons that Pooh has to be one of these two species. First, conveniently, the Hundred Acre Wood is based on a real forest, the 500 Acre Wood in the UK. While not the most interestingly named, the reference is clear, and the bear that used to roam the UK in these woods was a subspecies of brown bear. However, that still doesn't close the book on this because Pooh is, after all, also a teddy bear, and they happen to have a very specific origin story. In 1902, the story goes that President Theodore Roosevelt refused to shoot a black bear that his associates had tied up to a tree. This then became a political cartoon and inspired Morris Mitchum to create the very first teddy bear named after Theodore Roosevelt Teddy, the president. This funny little piece of presidential legend slash political propaganda became the most ubiquitously owned toy in the world in the century since. So we have ourselves the two main suspects, but which is it? Fortunately, there are a few key features that can help us distinguish each type of bear. Let's start with the brown bear. They tend to have small, round ears, deep, sunken eyes close together, and a dish-shaped snout where there's a clear curve between the top of the head and the tip of the nose. Brown bears also have a very defined shoulder hump, which is the highest point of their body when they're on all fours. Black bears, on the other hand, have longer, more erect ears, eyes that sit further apart, and no shoulder hump. And because of that, they have more of a teardrop body shape, with the rump being the highest part. So now let's look at Pooh. His ears stand on end and are more oval than round, so one point for black bear. We can definitely see from the face that his eyes are set further apart, another point. As for body shape, Pooh clearly doesn't have a shoulder hump, and although we never see him walking on all fours, his torso is larger at the bottom and gets narrower as it goes up, pointing to the likelihood that his rump would be higher. So it would seem that Pooh is indeed an American black bear. Now that we've established the kind of bear Pooh is, we can start to work out what he needs to survive. The average American black bear needs to consume 8,000 calories every day during the spring, and a whopping 20,000 calories in the fall to get ready to hibernate. However, we already know that Pooh doesn't hibernate due to the many times that we see him playing out in the snow, and that's not all. The average black bear is 5 to 7 feet, or 1.5 to 2.1 meters tall when stood on their hind legs. Given the fact that we see Pooh standing next to a child, it's unlikely that Pooh is nearly that tall. To get a better understanding of how many calories a bear his size would need to consume, we need to figure out his height. Now, I thought that this would be simple, but it turns out there's no canon height for Winnie the Pooh. A character that's been around since 1926 does not have himself a canon height. A quick Google search suggested that Pooh is 22 inches or 56 centimeters tall, but the source for this was sketchy at best. It's mainly a random collection of pages based on Winnie the Pooh, Godzilla, and American Serial. Of all the things to have a website for, I don't think I'd ever have thought to put Winnie the Pooh alongside Godzilla and Captain Crunch, though I gotta admit, I definitely watched that show. Long story short, I took matters into my own hands and brought out the pixel measurements. It would be nearly impossible to measure Pooh in the cartoon, given none of the characters have canon heights, and the objects tend to be proportional to them rather than to the world. Instead, I turned to the 2018 live-action film Christopher Robin. Ewan McGregor, who plays Christopher Robin, has a height of 1.77 meters, or 5 foot 10 inches. Therefore, we should be able to take shots of Pooh next to him and figure out his height. But after hours of measuring, I got nothing. Due to angles and perspective, every time I did the math, or maths, if you're using the proper version of English, I got a slightly different answer. It would range anywhere from 20 to 25 inches, or 51 to 63.5 centimeters. All around the right range, but nothing definitive. At this point, I was ready to give up, but then I remembered this shot. Why is that shot important? Well, Pooh is put in a British red telephone box, and their sizes are standardized. The box that they're in is a K6 model. And yes, of course I'm up on my British telephone box types, aren't you? This is clear because we can see that it has eight rows of glass. 
glass, with the middle panes being much wider than the two on either side. Previous models, like K2, 3, and 4, had six rows of equal-sized panes, and the K1 had four rows of two equal-sized panes. Plus, modern versions tend to be one solid pane of glass, so it is unquestionably a K6 telephone box in the movie. Based on the standardized size of K6 telephone boxes, I can now say definitively that Pooh is, in fact, 22 inches or 56 centimeters, which, in an ironic twist, means that that sketchy website was right. That is several hours of my life that I'm not getting back. Should have listened to that Godzilla serial website. If we compare this to the smallest average black bear, five feet or one and a half meters, who is just over a third of that size. So if you break down the amount of calories per day in the spring per centimeter of height, who would need a calorie intake of just over 2,980 calories per day? That's not that much, but for someone who's 22 inches high, it's pretty substantial. And Pooh is supposed to only be eating honey. Does honey contain enough calories? Is there even enough honey in the 100 acre wood to keep him alive? For those answers, I had to look into one of my new favorite topics, honey science. And yes, it is a real thing. In fact, in 1912, there was an annual journal released, and it's still going strong today, entitled Bee World, that would discuss, and I quote, the progressive interests of modern bee culture. You like jazz? And people think that being into movies makes you a nerd. In volume 32, issue 2 of Bee World, Eva Crane wrote a paper focusing on the amount of honey a colony of bees can yield in a year. In this paper, she notes that the caloric value of honey is 1,400 calories per pound, or 31 calories per kilogram, which adds up because that's what we see advertised today. On average, a strong colony in a good year produces 30 to 60 pounds, or 14 to 27 kilograms of honey in a 365-day span, equating to about 0.16 pounds, or 70 grams of honey per day. This would only give Pooh 224 calories for his daily meal, far below what he needs to survive. But again, that's just one colony of bees. How many colonies of bees are there likely to be in the 100-acre wood? Well, we've only seen a couple of hives on the show, but that's where Eva Crane comes in again. She states that one colony of bees needs one acre of well-pollinated land in order to produce those averages. In theory, the 100-acre wood could have 100 colonies living there, each within their own acre. Obviously, it could be more, as bees have been known to travel up to five miles, it could be less, but for the sake of clean numbers, let's just say that there are a hundred colonies. This means, then, that even in a low season, there would be around 3,000 pounds, or 1,361 kilograms of honey every year. That is over four million calories per year, giving Pooh a more than healthy 11,500 calories per day to live off of. That's over four times what we estimated he would need. It also means that Pooh would have to travel about 26 acres every day to get his fill. Maybe that's why we see him wandering around so much. So, is that it? Who just survives? Well, if you're familiar with this channel, you know I couldn't just leave it there. Technically, for a black bear his size, Pooh could find his requisite 3,000 calories per day, but that isn't necessarily a good thing. Black bears are opportunistic eaters by nature. Because of this, 75 to 95 percent of their diet tends to be vegetation. Things like grass, berries, nuts. If the environment allows for it, they'll also fill a portion of their diet with rodents, birds, fish, insects. All of this is an aid of collecting fats carbohydrates, protein. The fats and carbs get broken down, stored, and used for energy, but protein has a bigger role here, helping to balance hormones, creating and repairing muscles, as well as being a source of energy. It also has the added bonus of making you feel fuller faster, whereas things like sugar and simple carbs often make you feel hungrier sooner. Honey does provide carbs that the body can use for energy, but it doesn't contain any protein, which is why it isn't usually a major source of food for bears. Notice how I said isn't usually. Usually. That's because under normal circumstances, bears don't just eat honey. Bears will eat everything inside the beehive. The honey, the larvae, even the bees themselves. This balances out the sugary carbs with the much-needed protein. But with Pooh, we see him spitting out the bees. He only eats the honey inside. So Pooh is going to be getting some energy out of this, but without any protein in his diet, he actually starts to run into a number of health risks. The first of which is that he's malnourished. We've all seen those videos online of a starving pet that's been abandoned, their bones showing through through their skin, barely able to walk. It's a sad sight, be sure, and the reason they look like this is because they're malnourished. Protein, unlike fat or carbohydrates, can't be stored for the body to draw on later. So if you're not eating enough protein, the body does the only thing it can do and finds what it needs within the body. Pooh's hunger is never satisfied because his body is crying out for the nutrients that he's not getting. And that's not the only problem that he faces. As Pooh's body begins to eat away at his internal proteins, it very well may start to eat away at the protein P. This protein is what scientists believe allow bears to gain so much weight before hibernation, but also never contract diseases like type 2 diabetes. How P10 works is it tells the body to store sugar, rather
rather than immediately breaking it down and sending it through the body. This means they have a large supply of sugar built up, so when they hibernate, it can slowly be released to give the body energy and keep their blood sugar levels regulated. If Pooh's body isn't getting any protein and begins to eat away at P10, he isn't gonna store the sugar to release it safely when he needs it. Instead, he'll have dangerous levels of sugar pulsing through his body, which his body won't be able to handle. And Winnie the Pooh will reach the same inevitable consequence that all of us do. Type 2 diabetes. That's right, if Pooh doesn't start diversifying his diet and picking up a few of those carrots from Rabbit's garden, he's heading down a dangerous path towards honey-induced diabetes. Pretty soon, he'll start feeling fatigued, feeling abnormally thirsty, get blurred vision, itchy skin, sudden weight loss, and wouldn't you know it, always feeling hungry. It's a little concerning that Pooh is always constantly asking for another small smack roll of something. And that's probably not just regular hunger he's feeling, but his body telling him it needs a much better balanced diet if he's gonna keep hunting heffalumps in the hundred acre wood. All that's to say, maybe it's for the best that our childhood imagination doesn't manifest itself in real life all that often, since Pooh turns out to be not only a bear of very little brain, but also a bear of very likely diabetes. And Rabbit is pretty spot on to hide his honey jars whenever Pooh comes a knocking. So is Pooh's love of honey plausible? Yeah, totally. Is it possible for him to get enough? Interestingly enough, absolutely. Is it now Christopher Robin's responsibility to make sure Pooh doesn't eat himself into a diabetic coma in the middle of the Hundred Acre Wood? Most definitely. Sorry, Christopher. Welcome to adulting. But hey, that's just a theory. A film theory. And cut. Winnie the Pooh, Captain Crunch, and Godzilla Looking for flavors through time and space Honey and Kaiju mixed in with their cereal What other adventures could they 